Hey, thanks for joining me for this Padres post-game recap for May 25th, where the Padres unfortunately dropped the final game of this three-game set to the Diamondbacks by a score of 6-5. Six, six runs, 11 hits, one error for the Diamondbacks. Five runs, nine hits, no errors for the Padres. And coming into this ball game, you knew it was going to be a tough matchup. They're going up against Patrick Corbin, the starter for the Diamondbacks, who is a perfect 7-0 and coming into this ballgame tonight and had not allowed more than two runs in any of the starts that he's made. So he has been unbelievably tough. So the Padres, what do they do? They come out in the first inning. Krista uh, Norfie with a leadoff double. Everett Cabrera bunts him over to third base. Chase Headley ground ball to shortstop. They get the run, run in, manufactured. Great job, Padres, and significantly draw first blood in this ballgame, which is always important to get the first run across, but even more important and significant against Patrick Corbin, who all season long had only allowed two runs in the first five innings in any of his nine starts this season. So certainly a nice accomplishment for the Padres, but unfortunately the lead was short-lived. Why Jason Marquis not sharp from the very beginning of this ballgame leaves a pitch out over an off-speed pitch to Eric Chavez. He drives it opposite field for a two-run home run. Two to one Diamondbacks after the end of the first inning. And then the second inning, more trouble for Jason Marquis, unfortunately. This time a pitch left out over to Miguel Montero, who the Padres had done a great job all series long of tying up hard on his hands and not been able to do anything with the hard stuff in. Marquis opted to go with something away. Double opposite field, that drove in a run and also set up for the second run to score. So at the end of two innings, 4-1 to one Diamondbacks. And really, this is another outing where Jason Marquis does not have the same command that we saw at any point during last season. Now, he's been able to pitch over that in many of his starts this year by coming up with the big pitch when he's needed to with runners on base. But we've just not seen Jason Marquis from the beginning of a ball game to the end having that same great command that he showed last season. So something's going on with him. He's battling. you got to give him credit. The veteran's finding a way to stay in ball games. He came into this game with six victories, which was great. The Padres had won his last five outings. No question about it. Uh, but you, know, you just want to see a little bit more sharpness out of him going forward, hopefully, so that each outing isn't one of these situations where he's having to make that big pitch with runners on base multiple times throughout his throughout his efforts. So anyway, he, he ends up leaving the ball game early. Um, Padres, though, they don't give up. They fight back, and they score another run against Corbin in the fourth inning to make it 2-2, two two, this time based on an uh, infield single by Jed Jerko. He reaches second base on an error by Corbin, who threw the ball over the first baseman's head. Kyle Blanks hits a little hand grenade into right field. That scores Jerko, so none of the ball is hard hit, but still, they get another run across. They get close, and then they tie it up in the fifth thanks to Carlos Quinton, who hits a two-run home run. Uh, absolute blast over the left field wall. And what's interesting is that Carlos now has really swung the bat well since coming back. He missed those few games with the sore left knee, had the ejection in the knee. You're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, how's he going to be able to produce now with the sore right knee previous in the season, now the sore left knee? Well, he's made some adjustments. He's he's really reduced the amount that he's using his lower body at the plate, using his hands a lot more, and it seems to be working. He had six hits in the last three games since coming back, including three doubles and this home run today. Uh, to drive in the two runs and tie up this ball game. So great to see Carlos Quinton making some uh, necessary adjustments and, and been productive the last three days. Tie ball game at this point, and unfortunately Tommy Lane gives up a run in the bottom of the fifth inning, and it's so painful because it's a two-out situation. He gives up a double to uh, Pollock. He gets himself in a scoring position. He goes on the very next pitch, and the pitcher, Corbin, gets a base hit on a little blooper over Chase Headley's head. It's the first base hit that the Diamondback pitching staff had actually had all season long. They've had a few hits, some doubles, some triples. This is the first single that they've actually had all season long against a poor hitting pitcher, but that was the difference. Run crosses, Diamondbacks have the lead. Padres would try to get back into this ballgame, but another run had scored by the Diamondbacks. The Padres got pushed a run across in the eighth, but it's too little too late, and they dropped this ballgame by a score of 6-5. to five. Very frustrating, to say the least, um, especially when you score four runs against Patrick Corbin. That hadn't happened all season long. You want to win those games when you get the opportunity to, to score some runs against a starter that's as tough as he is. Padres couldn't hang on and do it. They'll try it again tomorrow. 110. We're in Seattle now. It'll be, well, it hasn't been officially announced yet, but we know that's going to be Clayton Richard. He's going to be activated tomorrow. Great to see Clayton back. Anxious to see what he has. Changed his arm slot. Apparently very effective in his rehab assignments. Good downward tilt. Better action on his changeup. 
Obviously, it translated well against the AAA hitters, but we'll see how it, it factors out against some big league hitters tomorrow. He'll be going up against the former Padre Aaron Harang, who's had a very rough start uh, since joining the Seattle Mariners. One and five with an ERA in the eights, 8.58. So a uh, good opportunity for the Padres to score some runs, give Clayton Richard a little bit of support, take some of the pressure off him, and hopefully that new arm slot that he's bringing to the table tomorrow will, will prove to uh, be getting him back on track. Game time, 110. Ted Leitner and myself will be bringing to the call in the mighty Ted 90. Um, some other quick news. Tuesday, bear in mind, Yasmani Grandal will be eligible to return after his 50-game suspension. So it'll be interesting to see if A, the Padres deem that he is ready to join the big club, and B, who they end up moving out to make room for him. Cameron Maben continues his rehab assignment uh, in AAA Tucson as well. And Logan Forsythe is starting to get some playing time uh, in Peoria with the extended spring guys. So hopefully some of these uh, pieces coming back to the Padres and they can be at full strength going into the second half. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm Bob Scanlon. Appreciate you joining me for this Padres postgame recap, and we will talk to you tomorrow after the ballgame. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.